What's cooking everybody? Dave Altizer here with Kinotika and today we're reviewing the Canon M50. When the Canon M50 was first announced, I was not that excited about it because it seemed kind of lackluster in its specs. But now that I have it in my hands and I've been using it for the last couple of days, I've honestly really fell in love with this camera. I think it's really one of the best all around tools from Canon in terms of photography and video. And for most people, it's at the right price as well. In terms of specs on this camera, we have a 24 megapixel sensor inside of it. It's actually the same one that's in all the other Canon cameras and it's inside here. But what makes it different than any other camera before it is the new Digic 8 processor. Now, if you're not aware of what that means and what that is, I will just tell you this. Digic 8 is the newest processor from Canon, meaning this is gonna give us the best image quality of all time on this sensor. We get more autofocus points. We have a new eye detection autofocus system. This camera really is designed for beginners and people who are ready to step up from mobile phone photography. If your iPhone just isn't cutting it anymore and you want a little bit better noise performance when you're shooting low light, or if you want that depth of field that you get by using interchangeable lenses like this camera, then this camera really is a great step up for you. It also ships with a kind of beginner's mode style of menu system, which is really interesting. We've seen it before on other Canon cameras. I personally turn it off because I wanna see all the more advanced features, but you can leave it on. It kind of helps you understand what those settings are and what they mean. It kind of walks you through it. And I'm glad that they've done this because it's really easy for me to recommend this to somebody who's just starting out with photography. The new processor also brings even better image stabilization in this camera when we're talking about video and stills, but especially for video. If you turn that on and you enable the image stabilization, it just makes hand holding this camera and getting smooth shots much more doable. When it comes to the build quality of the Canon M50, it's decent, it's not bad. It feels good in the hands. There's enough grip here for even someone like me who's got fairly large hands to hold it. We do have the beloved selfie flip screen. This is the thing that everybody wants, everybody needs, especially for YouTubers or for those selfie shots. You also get the ability to look through a viewfinder on here. That's a small little OLED viewfinder. What's interesting, however, is with the touch screen, and the EVF, I can actually change my focus points by simply touching the touch screen here and moving my focus point and looking through the viewfinder. It's really useful. It's something that feels really natural. You can use it like this, but my nose kind of always hits it. The camera uses these LPE12 batteries and they're okay. I only get about 30 minutes of video record time on it. Honestly, if you buy this camera, I would recommend going on Amazon and buying some extra batteries. On the M50, you get not only a hot shoe like the G1X, but you actually get a real mic input. Yay. All the vloggers in the world and YouTubers are rejoicing. I will say the biggest issue with the mic input is the placement of it. I feel like they could have done a better job with that. I don't know why they didn't put it up here. That would have been nice. See, could have put it right here. No big deal it would plug in and it wouldn't interfere with the screen. While we're on the topic of the mic input, I will just go ahead and say this camera is actually really good for video. And when I say video, I mean 1080p video in particular. For just an all around video camera, for filming your family, if you're on a trip, if you're a vlogger, it's just so usable and so great. The quality of the 1080p is really sharp, but when you switch to 4K, the camera crops in on the image by 1.7x. 1.7x crop on top of this already kind of cropped camera makes this wide lens more of a tight lens. One really great thing about this camera is the autofocus system for video. You get dual pixel autofocus that has been in a lot of other Canon cameras, but it's just as good here as it's always been. Plus you get the better noise performance because of the Digigate processor and you get the ability to see yourself with this flip screen. The audio preamps inside this camera are actually really good. So using this microphone with this camera, the audio just sounds really clear. This camera can also record in a really high frame rate, 120 frames per second. Now it does go to a 720p mode and the image gets very soft and you'll definitely see some noise and aliasing. It's kind of like jagged edges and stuff just image issues, but if you wanna just get a really cool epic slow-mo shot of water or you're out at the lake and you see a boat go by, 
something like that. It's it's okay, it's decent. It's definitely nothing pro, but it's there and the slow-mo does look good if the if it's not that important. However, the 1080p at 60 frames per second is really good. Not only can you shoot at 60 frames per second, but you can slow that footage down to 24 frames per second if you're shooting at 24, and it gives you nice slow motion without any of those image issues. Also on this camera, we have a built-in time-lapse feature. This camera built-in can record up to a 4K time-lapse. With stills with this, um, when it comes to stills on this camera, this camera is really capable actually. I switched the kit lens with the 22 millimeter lens. And in my opinion, this is one of the best EFM lenses available right now. And if you're not aware, this camera uses a completely different lens mount. It's called EFM. All the mirrorless cameras from Canon are APS-C size sensors and they only have a few lenses in their lineup right now, unfortunately, but the 22 millimeter is one of the best. If you do own other EF lenses at the moment, this is really your only option. You wanna get this adapter from Canon. It converts the lens mount from EFM to the standard EF adapter, and that allows you to use any of the primes or zooms that you have. But I really recommend that you guys pick up an extra set of EFM lenses. I know it's gonna be a little pricey, especially if you already own some other lenses, but I really recommend it because these lenses are tiny. Look at this. This thing is literally the size of, I don't know, what is it, what is it the size of? Not only is this 22 millimeter lens really small, it's actually got a great aperture, it's f2. So you can really get some nice shallow depth of field with this lens. And honestly, I keep this thing locked on this camera like 80% of the time. The specs on this camera for photography is really good. It's an APS-C size sensor, like I've said a million times. It's the 24 megapixel sensor from the ADD. The dynamic range performance is really good. The ISO performance is pretty decent. We'll run some pictures here of the ISO performance. I have noticed that the ISO performance is slightly better than what I've seen on like the SL2, for example, and that's coming because of the new processor, like I mentioned, the Digic 8. Not only can you take just normal JPEGs on this camera, which I would recommend if you're just wanting to post on Instagram and Facebook, it also gives you this new compressed RAW format, which I highly recommend you shoot in. Compressed RAW gives you 30 to 40% less file size, but you still get the same resolution and the flexibility of a raw image. If you're not familiar with what raw is and why it's important, raw basically captures the image but allows you to change things like exposure, your highlights, your shadows in post-production, which is really nice. If you're a little bit off on your white balance, changing that in post with the raw data is really great to have. There's also a completely silent photo mode on this camera. So you can be snapping pictures and you don't hear a single sound whatsoever. So one of the best things about this camera is the amazing Wi-Fi connection. As you see here, I just turned the camera on and it immediately connected. That's because I did the initial connection here on the phone and because of the Bluetooth tied to the Wi-Fi, we get a really quick response time here. What's also really amazing is this auto transfer feature. Once you turn auto transfer on, you can just turn your phone off, put it in your pocket. Boom, boom, boom. So I just took three pictures. You'll actually see in my images those pictures that I just took. This camera doesn't have GPS built in, but again, in the same way that it sends images to your phone, you can actually send the location information from your phone to the camera. So I just enabled it. It's now recording my location and every image that I take, it's tracking the, the GPS from the phone on the images that you take. Overall, the Canon M50, in my opinion, is the best deal in Canon's entire lineup. The M50 may not be that exciting to pros, but what is exciting is the potential of the mirrorless system from Canon. I really feel like they're getting some heat from Sony, Panasonic, and even Nikon right now to build up their mirrorless system. This camera is real exciting. We're gonna be doing a lot more content about it. Let us know what you think about this video in the comment section below. And if you wanna see more M50 videos, make sure to stay subscribed and hit that notification bell so you know exactly when our next M50 video comes out. Once again, I'm Dave Altizer. This is Kinetika. See you next time.